So this is the kind of one-handed technique for sparking a fire steel onto your tinder. Okay, you put the tinder in here, then you place your knife like this. Okay, then you stick a foot on it, like so. Put your fire steel on. Okay. As you can see, that's a good sparker. I have only one knife that sparks better than that, and that's the F1, which is legendary for creating sparks. As you can see, a wee bit of discoloration, which just wipes off. So, we'll now try the Shango notch. I think this is the way it goes. Come on, Emmers. Watch out, love. Come right here. Go and get the house. So, as I say, now we'll try the Shango notch. Right. Same, same deal. Put the tinder below where, where the sparks are going to come off. Oh dear. Uh, have I got this on the wrong side? Is it supposed to go this way? So I would put my my tinder in here. You have to put uh, considerable kind of force in this way, okay, to get a good spark off that. It's an awkward movement, but it's not actually as bad as I thought it was going to be. This is obviously the way with the, the dimple facing up. The other way doesn't seem to work. Um. That was my first time doing that, so it took me a while to work out, sure. And I'm sure everybody's the same. But there you go. That's actually nearly an easier way to do it than with your hand. Because if you imagine having to hold the knife like this, okay, you can see you can see the problem here. Right? Me having to go like this. Not only that, but as you strike up, it whacks you in the top of the thumb. Okay, that's not actually that pleasant. You can't get a wee bit of a spark that way. But it's it's not as not as positive as this. Okay, which is you know, this is the way I this is the way I normally do it, okay? You hold this in a good grip like so. The, the knife's not going anywhere, okay? The knife never moves, and you draw the steel away. You get a very, very focused shower of sparks, all right? You can also do it this way by pressing down with your thumb on the back of this thumb, which is pushing down the knife, okay? Okay, I can actually set fire to the grass that way. See the knife? It's discolored but it doesn't really matter. This is one tough beast of a knife. As is the the top uh, brothers of bushcraft fieldcraft knife. There's the two together. Okay. Um they're about the same size. My the the uh as you can see there the um, S1 has a, a more acute tip, and it's not as broad, okay? Like this hides completely behind it. Um, this is stainless steel, obviously. Well, uh, laminate VG10, okay? 
which is a stainless steel effectively. This is carbon steel. Um, this is uncoated. This is coated. The back of this blade you, you can't strike you can't take sparks off it. You can get a few off here, the tip here. And you probably could get absolute crackers off here, but I'm not gonna do that. In the emergency situation that's where I would probably go for there. Okay, you, you don't really use that little portion of your knife. Um very, very seldom. You use all this obviously in the tip, but that's a portion that I never really use. So there you go. Just compare that as well. The width of the handles. The uh Brothers of Bushcraft is actually a lot wider. The blades are I think the S1 is thicker down here, but it thins out a lot towards the top as you can see. Okay? It thins out, starts thinning out here, and it gets thinner and thinner and thinner all the way to the tip. Where it is actually very thin. Alright, that's what I like about that blade. Anyway. There you go. Not actually that bad, okay. I just don't like to have the blade out. And with a one-handed technique as I showed you, it's it's pretty effective for sharp sparks. Next time I'm gonna test this bad boy out with a bow drill set. See how it goes.